Hello, I am Jan from Prague, the Czech Republic, and in this video I am going to show you how to avoid blurry photos on your mobile phone when taking pictures of things in motion, so that you won't be disappointed that the camera on your phone can't handle a seemingly trivial thing, taking a picture of your dog, for example. And it's really simple, you just need to set your phone to use a shorter exposure time. We'll see how to do this on the rainy day using Samsung, Xiaomi, and my personal iPhone. Let's do it! In this video I will show you everything in great detail, but if you want to jump right into testing, here is a quick summary to get you started. So, take the dog for a walk. And if it gets blurry on a gloomy day like this, if you have an Android phone, go into the Pro section. If you have an iPhone, you will need to download an app for that, like Lightroom, which has a good free version. And if the dog gets blurry on the images, you just need to set a shorter exposure time. But be careful not to overdo it, because a shorter time also means a higher ISO. So you will get more of so-called noise and generally lower quality of photos. So that's it. It's simple. Now, if you are a little bit lost, let us discuss this in more detail here. So let us start with the key point. Why does motion blur like this? Why is this all happening? Well, it's the exactly same reason like when you would be using proper cameras. Your phone is a bit clueless, or we can even say silly, because it just does not know it's taking a picture of something which is moving. So it is not able to set it properly and you have to step in. I'm really sure you have a lot of pictures like this. And let's open that photo on my desktop Lightroom just to see these small letters here, because that is where the problem lies. These shots were shot with exposure time of 1 25th of a second, which might sound like a short time, but it is not. And in fact, this is the reason why all this is happening. This is taken with 1 35th of a second and the dog moves by 3 centimeters. It's not too much, but it's enough to spoil your day, to spoil the photo. So, and it's really important to understand that detail. It's important to understand why all that is happening. So we know how to fix it. And the fix is quite simple. You just need to get photos like that. You need to set the pro mode, as we already seen, and set the exposure time to shorter levels. You can see that that shot was taken with exposure time of 1 500th of a second. Sorry for the pronunciation, but it's really, really short here. And again, I mean, it's just really a really huge difference between these photos and these photos. And all the trick is so simple. You are simply using shorter time. So it, it takes much less time for the camera to draw the picture. But of course, everything has its price. And the price is that the short time also means higher ISO. And it means that the picture has lower quality. We can see the, the ISO here. The ISO was 6400. And ISO in photography also means that the photo just gets more of so-called noise. So if we just zoom into that action photo, you can see that the quality is lower. You simply have to decide, should I have these photos or should I just risk having photos like that and just to, well, accept that if I want to have dog frozen, <laughs> I just need to accept that the quality would be slightly lower. Does this make sense? I hope it does. And Let's jump to the concrete part of what should we do. We have to understand that if you have an Android phone, it certainly has something called Pro section or Pro mode. You can see it here and it's very, very simple. You open it and you see you have several options here and typically you would touch the number meaning exposure time. Just touch it and you have the option to make it shorter, as you can see here uh, on these uh, frames for my phone. So the key point is you just make the time shorter. So the movement, the motion does not get blurred. It's very easy. 
But you can see here that as we make the time shorter, the levels of ISO, the sensitivity, go up. And we already heard that higher ISO also means lower quality of the pictures, meaning uh, higher levels of noise. We just make the time shorter and we pay for this with higher levels of noise. Fair enough for the moment, I guess. Let's just discuss this in more detail here. Uh, if you <laughs> ever went to a photography course, you might have seen tables like this. It basically explains what we've just seen. This is so-called exposure time. And uh, this table shows the clear logic of what is happening. If the time is long, the motion simply gets blurred. If the camera will be drawing the dog for half a second, logically the dog would just, you know, move by two, three meters. So there would be nothing left of him. And we just have to go up and make the time shorter. And if you really need to freeze uh, quicker movement, you need to set it to very short levels. And this is ISO. And again, we know that ISO meaning uh, sensitivity, once again, is a great thing when we are able to tell our sensor, please be more sensitive. And it does, so it does not need that much time, but we pay for that with noise as it is shown here. So if we want to get the dog fixed, we just have to accept, as I already mentioned, that uh, it looks nice, but if we start zooming, the, the photo just won't be that perfect as we might want. It's take it or leave it situation. And the obvious question would be, so what should I set there? How should I, well, not get confused with all of this? So we can see that Ivy is moving. So the only chance to have that photo is to use a very high ISO of 6,400. So the time is short and the movement is not blurred. So the dock is moving and we have no other choice than keep the levels of ISO high and keep the time short. But look at this. Suddenly, Ivy, surprisingly, <laughs> uh, stopped running around and we can do this test because we do not need that uh, short time anymore because she's not moving that quickly. So I just lowered ISO to 3200 and the time is only about one hundredth of a second. The same here. So she's not moving so I can lower it so the quality of the photo would be really much higher. But, as you can guess, uh, that did not last long enough. And I mean, she's really very quick dog. So immediately at these levels, uh, which would be fine when she's not moving, at these levels, any movement means that the photo again gets blurred. And we have to go up again and we have to rise ISO, we have to shorten the time and simply fix that situation. Why am I describing all this in uh, such a great detail? I just do not really want you to get confused. But the point is, there is no simple and straightforward reply to the logical question, which levels should I set? Which uh, exposure time is good for that and this? Uh, no, you simply have to know and you have to accept that you will be testing this all the time. And anytime the movements is not that intensive, you just are in the position to lower ISO, to let the time be a little bit longer. But once the movement comes back, you have to reset this all. Let me show you one more example taken with Samsung. We are here in the streets of Prague and quickly moving trams. And I was just testing this and I have taken this shot for very, very short time, for an ISO 3200. And um, you can see that if I just zoom, you can see a lot of noise and uh, it does not really make sense. So what we can do, yes, of course, we can let the time to be a little bit longer. <laughs> it's still very short, but it's it's longer and the ISO is not uh, 3200, uh, but only, <laughs> only, well, 2000. And suddenly you see it looks much better. There's not that much of noise there, so that would probably make sense. So let's see some more testing, how about this? Now, we, well, let's just make the time really relatively long. 
Oh, well, no, you can see that the car is simply blurred, so this is not the option. So let's go back one thousandth of a second, which might be a, a reasonable way to stop the movement and at the same time not to have too much noise. So let me just sum this all up. What really matters is that you need to understand that it has to be done time to time. You need to be able to freeze the movement sometimes as a first point. The second is the principle is very easy. Make the exposure time shorter. That's the first part of it because that's what freezes the movement. Then the second thing is that you are paying for that with the higher ISO meaning higher noise. So thank you so much. Take care. I'm Jan from Prague, the Czech Republic.